everyone, Deanna Klein here from the Anton Art Center. I teach all the clay classes at the Art Center. And I just thought I'd do a couple of videos on some at-home projects that you can do to just make sure that you're keeping your creative juices flowing and keeping your hands busy and um, your mind focused. So um, I'm just gonna go through a couple options because I'm sure a lot of you do not have clay at home that we would use normally at the art center. So I just thought I'd let you know that there are some alternatives that you can use while at home. So the first thing is you, if you are lucky enough to have um, some clay that you can bake at home just right in your oven. Um, usually you can get this at Michael's Arts and Crafts or Joanne Fabrics. Um, I know that those places are not open right now, so it's great if you already have some of this. And um, this is gonna be clay that you bake in the oven, so it'll end up being nice and hard. Um, so you can pretty much make whatever you want with that, and I'll kind of go over some examples. Some other clay options that you might have at home already. Um, this is a modeling clay. So the nice thing about this clay is that it's a clay that um, does not get hard, so you can keep working with it over and over again, almost like Play-Doh, okay? And this comes in all kinds of different colors. And then the other option here is an air dry clay. So this is a little bit different um, consistency. It's much more airy and foamy, um, but what's nice about it is that it dries out within 24 hours and then you can um, paint it with acrylic paints. <coughs> Excuse me. Okay, so um, as far as like a little setup at home that you can do, I just have a baking sheet or a cookie sheet with some wax paper on it. Um, you really don't even need the wax paper. You can work right on um, the surface. You just don't want whatever you're using to stick to the surface. So, and then a couple other tools that I found in my home that most people have. Toothpicks are a really good tool. Fork spoon, who knows? And then what's really nice is um, since it's springtime, you can go on outside and find um, maybe some pine cones or some seed um, pods outside, some sticks. Um, I don't have a stick here. Some sticks, leaves work really well, maybe even a couple little flowers to push into the clay. It's a really good um, way to create design and pattern, which is always really nice. So um, I have the air dry clay here, this modeling clay, so it's all white. And then I'll go back in um, after it's dried and I can paint it with some acrylic paint. Um, what I did start making, I just have a few um, really simple projects. Just make sure that when you're making something, because it's gonna be permanent, right? You're not gonna be able to mold it back down and make it into something else. Make sure it ends up being exactly what you want it to be. So really spend a little time, make sure it, it looks how you want it to, take your time smoothing out edges. Um, I'm gonna start here with just a simple little pinch pot. So this is just like a basic little pinch pot. I actually have an example in some clay this has actually been fired in the in the clay studio. But just an idea of just a small little dish. Um, I like these little dishes. I, I'll usually call them a trinket dish or maybe even a, a salt cellar, which just holds salt next to your stove. What's nice about them is you can keep anything in them. Jewelry, hair ties. You can even put a little plant in there. Plant something in there. Okay. So if you wanna just start with a ball, you start with any size ball that you want. You're gonna put your finger right into the center. We don't wanna go all the way through though. And then you're just gonna to start to pinch. And really take your time, get a good view here. Really take your time and pinch. And what I'm doing is this, just pinching the clay between my fingers, like a lobster claw. Pinch, pinch, pinch. I'm sure that if you've been in my class before, this is always the very first project we start out with because it is a very, very old technique that has so many possibilities. And the more you practice this technique called pinch pots, um, the better you're gonna get. And the more um, 
you're gonna like doing it. So I like to switch hands when I'm pinching, just so that my one hand doesn't get tired. And you can see it's starting to form the inside. If you get some cracks on the outside, that's okay. I actually kind of like the rough look. Maybe you do too. So you can just pinch until you get a little pot that you like. <clears throat> I like to make sure the edge, so this part where you're gonna see it the most, I like to make sure it looks exactly how I want it to. So I will really take my time doing this part. You wanna create a flat bottom. So see how it's kind of like weeble wobble right now? You wanna just kinda of hit it down on your table a couple times. And smooth it out on the inside. Get it so it's sitting nice and flat. Okay. I'm gonna shape mine a little bit. I like mine to be a little bit more oval. You can turn it into a flower shape if you want. And then you can also add things to this. Um, I'm actually not sure what this air dry clay uh, so in the clay classes, I teach that you have to do something called scoring and slipping anytime you're attaching clay to clay. So say I wanted to attach a little kitty cat ear to the top of this piece here. I'd have to rough up both sides, add water and attach it. But with this air dry clay, what's nice is that you can just put it on there and blend it in. So all I'm doing is I just set it on there Make sure I'm holding on to it and then blend the clay together. Blending is where we get rid of all of the seams. So a seam is um, something like, think about like a seam on your shirt. So where the sleeves are attached to the rest of your, um, your shirt, it's where, it's where it's stitched together and you can usually see the seam. We don't wanna see the seam here. We wanna just blend it right together so we can't see it. And as I said before, really take your time. This looks a little bit more like a bear ear, I'd say. <laughs> Maybe it'll turn into a bear instead of a kitty cat. Okay, so um, as I'm working on this, I just wanted to kind of give you a couple other things that you can make out of clay or out of the, especially the modeling air dry clay. Um, if you don't think you need any more little dishes to hold things or you don't want, um, you don't want to make any type of, um, vessel to hold something, you can always go towards the jewelry route and make a couple, um, or make a bunch of beads if you like. So I made a few beads here already and all I did, actually, I'm going to go away from my pinch pot that looks like it's turning into a frog, actually. <laughs> you never know sometimes, right? Those look like eyeballs up there. I can even draw with my, um, with my little toothpick, draw some eyeballs on there. Or maybe once I get to, this is dried out and I can paint my eyeballs on tomorrow. So I'm gonna put that off to the side. So you can see it there. And then all I did for the beads took a little chunk of the air dry clay, rolled it in my hand. This might take a little bit of practice, that's okay. Just keep trying. Okay, so this is a nice smooth bead. Okay, first thing I wanna do so I don't forget and it turns into a bead and not just a little chunklet of air dry clay is I wanna take my toothpick and make a hole. So this hole is gonna be for whatever I decide to use to make it into a necklace or maybe some earrings or we could even do some type of keychain. So all I'm doing is taking my toothpick, putting it through and then just kind of moving it around a little bit to make it a little bit larger. The worst thing about making something like this is that if you don't make the hole big enough, you can't fit your cord through there or whatever you're gonna put through. I think right now what we're kind of going for is anything that we have in the house, right? A couple other options for cording. 
meaning to make a necklace or whatever. Um, fishing line is really good. When I was little, we used to use dental floss for a lot of things. So we, you can make necklaces out of dental floss and string your beads that way. So this is where some texture comes in. So um, this one here, see a little bit of texture there. I used this, I just happened to have this little rolly guy in my studio. Um, you can also use, so this one here is a pine cone texture. Okay, I think that'll look really good with some paint on it too. Let's see, I'm thinking um, I'm going to use my, my uh, toothpick to just draw something on here. So maybe you want to take the other side of the toothpick, the flat side, and make little polka dots. That seems like it'd be cute. I think the most important thing is to make what you want to make. Make sure you take your time and make it look really nice and exactly how you want it to, especially right now we have a good amount of time on our hands. And um, make sure it looks exactly how you want it to before you let it dry. So if you do want to continue to work on your pieces and you have not finished them, don't leave them out because they will dry overnight. What you can do is wrap them up in either a plastic grocery bag or a piece of um, saran wrap. And you can continue to work on it the next day. So see if I have my little polka dots there. It's pretty cute. So I think I'm gonna make a whole bunch of these and if you wanna make all of your beads the same, you can make them all the same or you can make them different. It's so whatever you want to do. Okay, a um, couple other th things that you can make out of this air dry clay. Um, and I am going to do another video with um, more of like an ornament type thing with some other, if you don't have any um, air dry clay or modeling clay at home and you have some flour and salt and water, we're going to make some um, salt dough in the next video here. But if you want to just flatten out your clay, the trick is to try to get it pretty even. This is called a slab of clay. And then you can cut out any shape that you want. You could even use this for a necklace too. Let's see. I actually really like the shape of this. It's a little seed pod. So I'm going to push this into my clay and trace around it. This is what I have. So I'm going to turn that into a little necklace. This could also be turned into an ornament if you'd like, but I think it might be a little too early for that. We might, might as well make some summer jewelry instead. Okay, so you can see I have this shape. I just want to round out the edges to make it look really nice. Like I said, take your time doing these things. Okay. And then the last thing that you don't want to forget is to put a hole in it for stringing it onto a necklace. Make sure the hole is big enough and that everything's smoothed out. The other thing on the back, you want to make sure the back part that you just put the hole through at is smoothed out so it doesn't scratch your neck. Then you'll have a nice ornament, or a nice ornament, a nice necklace, a little pendant to hang. Maybe even some little bead earrings to go with it. So the next step would be, once you're finished, to let the um, clay dry out and then you're going to paint it. Um, if you are, if you have some of this clay at home, definitely utilize it and um, just start by working with it. Make sure that you're taking your time. Figure out maybe what you want to make beforehand and then go for it. And um, I hope everyone is doing well. And we hope to see you soon at the Art Center. Thank you.